The fallout from an ugly incident in 2016 involving the football team continues to affect the University of Minnesota and the latest battleground now appears to be a federal court. ESPN has obtained a new lawsuit filed against the school on Friday, which alleges racial and gender discrimination, intentional, willful, and malicious misconduct, and deliberate indifference from the university that caused damage to nine current and former Gophers football players. And players were initially involved in the original sexual assault incident that led to various suspensions and expulsions from the program but the report does not say which of the group is not participating in the lawsuit. It does however point out that three current members of the 2018 team are involved with the lawsuit, Antoine Winfield Jr., Seth Green and Antonio Cheno. We are aware of the lawsuit served on behalf of several current and former students, the school said in a statement released to ESPN. The university thoughtfully and thoroughly responds when faced with disturbing allegations, and provides extensive process to students accused of misconduct, including the opportunity to be heard during thorough investigations, panel hearings, and provost review. Further, aggrieved students have a right to review by the Minnesota Court of Appeals. We will vigorously defend the university. The lawyers for the group are seeking $45 million in damages, or about $5 million per player. While there are a lot of details involved in the story, most will remember the initial fallout from 10 players getting suspended when the Gophers' entire football team held a short boycott of activities shortly before they played in the Holiday Bowl. The team eventually relented from the boycott and went on to beat Washington State in the game but the damage was already done to many involved and then head coach Tracy Clays was eventually fired after supporting his players in the matter, he somewhat ironically was later hired by the Cougars as their new defensive coordinator. No charges were brought in the matter by prosecutors but the heart of the lawsuit alleges mishandling by the university and how they dealt with the case internally, including the eventual suspensions and expulsions of the 10 players. It goes without saying that this will be something to keep an eye out for over the coming months and years, to say nothing of the awkwardness of having three Gophers playing for and suing their own school at the same time this season. Quarterbacks have dominated the conversation when it comes to the Heisman Trophy but 2018 could be a little different when it comes to the nation's most outstanding player thanks to several running backs elbowing their way to the front of the line. According to ESPN, the Westgate Superbook in Las Vegas just posted their first set of odds for the Heisman this season and have installed Stanford tailback Bryce Love as the betting favorite for the award at 5-1 odds. Following closely on his heels is Wisconsin sophomore back Jonathan Taylor at 7-1 odds. Love followed in the big shoes left behind on the farm by Christian McCaffrey and was sensational last season, rushing for 2,118 yards, second in FBS, and won the Dope Walker Award as the best running back in the country. Similar to his fellow Stanford teammates though, he finished as the runner-up for the Heisman to eventual winner Baker Mayfield, the fifth time a Cardinal player finished second in the voting since Toby Gerhardt narrowly missed out on the trophy in 2009. While being the favorite by no means guarantees a great season, it does give Love a little extra, um, well, Love to kick off his 2018 campaign to shed the groomsman label and finally become a groom himself when it comes to the award. As for Taylor, he had a terrific debut campaign for the Badgers with 1,977 yards as a true freshman and led his team to an undefeated regular season record, a division title and an Orange Bowl victory. After his spot on the board however it's all the glamour position of quarterbacks according to the Westgate, which lists Alabama signal caller to a tag of Ilo at 10 to 1, followed by Georgia's Jake Fromm, Oregon's Justin Herbert and Arizona's Khalil Tate all at 14 to 1. There's not been too much movement in the odds following the conclusion of the 2017 season, as Bovada listed Love and Taylor as their two biggest favorites back in January. 
the full, updated, odds from the Westgate, are below, Love, 5 to 1, Taylor, 7 to 1, Tagovailoa, 10 to 1, from, Herbert, Tate, 14 to 1, Washington, quarterback, Jake Browning, Ohio State, running back, J.K. Dobbins, Georgia running back DeAndre Swift, Auburn quarterback Jarrett Stidham, Clemson quarterback Kelly Bryant, Oklahoma quarterback Kyler Murray, Michigan quarterback Shea Patterson, Penn State quarterback Trace McSorley and West Virginia quarterback Will Greer, 20-1. Joe Moorhead hasn't even coached a game in the SEC yet but he's already sending subtle shots to other coaches in the league who might be trying to paint him in a negative light. In a long interview with USA Today about adjusting to life in Mississippi State after decades spent as an assistant and head coach in the Northeast, Moorhead pretty firmly pushed back at a few theories of how to recruit in the area and why he could conceivably be at a disadvantage with all his experience coming north of the Mason-Dixon line. I truly believe the regional aspect of recruiting and coaching couldn't be more overblown, he said. If you can recruit, you can recruit. If you can coach you can coach, Nick Saban and Urban Meyer aren't Southern, he finishes, and they did okay in the SEC. Where you're born doesn't guarantee success, he tells them, but it doesn't eliminate it. The comments can be seen as a fairly direct response to South Carolina's Will Muschamp, an SEC veteran at several schools, who told the state at league meetings that recruiting in the conference is different from anywhere else and presents some difficulty for outsiders to pick up on and manage. As much as anything, what's different in our league is the recruiting element, Muschamp said. It's 24-7, 365 and you have to be involved or it will get away from you. That's what a lot of coaches who come in our league don't always understand is that side of it. Moorhead definitely has a good point about two of the most dominant coaches in recent SEC history being from elsewhere and still cleaning up on the recruiting trail. In the end, their tenacity at going after top prospects is what separates the Sabans and Myers of the world from the pack much more so than where they're from or what kind of accent they might have, certainly the more relatable traits to take away for somebody new to the area. Muschamp's original comments came as he was asked about new Tennessee head coach Jeremy Pruitt, who also has a lengthy resume filled with SEC experience. While we may not be able to test this insider-outsider theory completely using Moorhead and Pruitt as examples, the two newbies do serve as a nice dichotomy as to how to approach the job of running one of the league's 14 programs. Perhaps the biggest shame however, is that the Bulldogs and Gamecocks don't meet again in the regular season until 2023 so we won't get the head-to-head -head clash between Muschamp and Moorhead to prove who's right on the subject between the lines. Texas A playing on Thanksgiving. For decades that meant taking on rival Texas but since the school moved to the SEC it has also included a few games against regional rival LSU. If the program wants to continue doing so however, they'll have to find somebody other than the Tigers to play. Speaking to the Dallas Morning News at SEC Spring Meetings last week, LSU Athletic Director Joe Oliva seemed to firmly draw a line in the sand on the holiday kickoff with his team. We're not playing on Thanksgiving, Oliva said, saying the day itself should be reserved to spend time with family. LSU in Texas A. The on-off-again nature of playing on the holiday seemed to be put to bed when the league made the Egg Bowl between Ole Miss and Mississippi State a traditional Thanksgiving night game most years but we're sure the door was still open if the two other schools wanted to arrange something. That's not in the cards anymore though and when Jimbo Fisher faces off against one of his former schools in either College Station or Baton Rouge, it seems like a lock that it will take place on a traditional Saturday in November. The latest player to part ways with Chip Kelly's UCLA football program has a very famous name attached to him. While writing in a Twitter post that he's going to deeply miss UCLA, Jackson Gibbs confirmed that he has decided to transfer from the Bruins. Not only that, but the quarterback announced his transfer destination, Appalachian State. Gibbs is the grandson of NFL Hall of Fame head coach and current NASCAR owner Joe Gibbs. I'm excited to announce that I'm transferring to Appalachian State University. 
I want to thank all my coaches and teammates who've made me a better football player and overall person this past year. I'm going to miss UCLA deeply but pumped to start my new chapter as a Mountaineer. Picked at twitter.com slash 6 Resi, Jackson Gibbs, at jgibbs underscore 11, June 8, 2018 Per the Los Angeles Times, Gibbs, was the fourth-string quarterback, and would have dipped to sixth string upon the arrival of Wilton Spade and Dorian Thompson Robinson this summer. At App State, Gibbs, a redshirt freshman, will have to sit out the 2018 season. Earlier this week, it was reported that offensive linemen Alex Akingbulu, Sean Sewards and Jack Swickaser are among four players no longer with the Bruins, the fourth player is punter Austin Kent.